On a Sunday, the prison warden called a condemned criminal and delivered the following message. Next week, you'll face execution at noon. The specific day of the execution will remain a surprise until the executioner enters your cell at noon. The warden was known for his unwavering honesty. The inmate pondered these words and grinned, saying, They can't execute me on Sunday because I'd find out on Saturday evening. Since I mustn't know the day of execution, the latest possible day must be Saturday. However, if I'm not executed on Friday, I'll know it's Saturday. So, Friday is ruled out. By applying this reasoning to each day of the week, I've effectively eliminated all options. The warden won't be able to execute me while staying true to his words. But, ironically, the criminal met his fate on that very day, revealing that the warden had, for the first time, deceived him. A burglar breaks into a home, taking a man and a woman hostage. He compels them to sit back to back in chairs, tying them securely. The intruder meticulously pilfers valuable items, stashing them in a bag. As he prepares to leave, the man implores him, Please, untie her, let her go. The thief retorts, No, I won't untie anyone to delay the cops finding out. Your neighbors will notice the lights on all night and check on you long before you're dehydrated. The man pleads once more, Please, just free her. I'll do anything. The robber reiterates his rationale. I need to escape without a trace. I can't leave anything to chance. The man inches his chair closer to the burglar, driven to desperation, and exclaims, I'm begging you, please, just release her. She won't call the police. I promise. Touched by the man's intense concern for his wife, the robber remarks, Wow, you must really love your wife to beg so desperately for her release. The man, in a frantic state, responds, No, my wife will be home in 15 minutes. Once upon a time, in the sunny town of Blondeville, two blondes found themselves in an amusing encounter that left everyone in stitches. It was a sunny day, and a blonde police officer named Officer Brooke was diligently patrolling the streets. Her heart was set on ensuring the town's safety, but little did she know that today's adventure would be a comedy of errors. As Officer Brooke was cruising down Main Street, she noticed a car that had swerved just a tad too close to the curb. Curiosity peaked. She flicked on her siren and pulled the car over. To her surprise, the driver of the car was none other than another blonde who we shall call, well, Blondie. Officer Brooke approached Blondie's car, her authoritative demeanor contrasting with her unmistakable golden locks. She politely requested, Ma'am, may I see your ID, please? Blondie, seemingly puzzled by this request, blinked her baby blues and countered with, ID? What's that? Officer Brooke sighed inwardly, not wanting to make any assumptions. She kindly explained, Your ID, ma'am, is the thing in your purse that has your picture on it. It's typically used to identify who you are. Blondie's eyes lit up with recognition, and she declared, Oh, got it! Hold on a sec! With the speed of a practiced magician, Blondie delved into her purse, rummaging through a sea of lipsticks, perfume bottles, and miscellaneous items until her fingers grasped something she assumed to be her ID, she triumphantly pulled it out, holding it up for Officer Brooke to inspect. But much to Officer Brooke's disbelief, Blondie was proudly showcasing a compact mirror, the kind you might use for quick makeup touch-ups. Officer Brooke couldn't help but raise an eyebrow as she found herself staring at her own reflection in the mirror. She glanced back at Blondie and said, Ma'am, I appreciate your cooperation, but this is a mirror, not your ID. Blondie, still beaming with the innocence and charm that only a blonde could exude, replied, Oh, silly me. I thought you wanted to see my picture, and it's right there. Officer Brooke's professionalism almost gave way to laughter, but she managed to keep a straight face and said, I understand the confusion, but I need to see your official identification like a driver's license. Blondie, now realizing the mix-up, chuckled and admitted, Oh, I get it now. Sorry about that. She continued to dig through her purse until she finally located her driver's license. As she handed it over, Officer Brooke examined it, and a grin started to spread across her face. She then said, You know, ma'am, I have to admit, 
this has been quite a unique traffic stop. If I had known you were an officer, I wouldn't have stopped you in the first place. Blondie laughed wholeheartedly and replied, Well, it's a blonde world, officer. We all have our moments. And with that, the two blondes shared a good-natured laugh, dispelling any tension that might have arisen from the initial confusion. It was a reminder that sometimes in the midst of life's absurd moments, a little humor can go a long way in brightening the day. As Officer Brooke waved Blondie off with a smile, she couldn't help but think that in Blondeville, even a simple traffic stop could turn into a comedy that everyone would remember for a long time. It was a town where blondes embraced their unique quirks and shared a laugh or two, even in the face of the most unexpected situations. Once upon a time in a picturesque little town, I found myself with a sudden urge to capture the charming antics of my beloved pet, a golden retriever named Max. Max, with his fluffy coat and boundless enthusiasm, was the perfect candidate for a canine photo shoot. After all, who could resist capturing the essence of such a lovable, goofy companion? Armed with my trusty camera and an enthusiastic imagination, I embarked on an adventure that would turn into an unforgettable and slightly peculiar photo session with Max. The day was bright, and the sun seemed to shine just a little brighter, creating a picturesque backdrop in our quaint backyard. As any seasoned pet owner knows, preparing for a dog photo shoot is no walk in the park, pun intended. It's a meticulous process that involves grooming, treats, and most importantly, an abundance of patience. I carefully brushed and fluffed Max's coat, making sure he was primed and looking his very best. It was a grooming session fit for royalty, or in this case, for a canine celebrity. With his luscious golden coat glistening, Max was ready to shine. Our photo session started off quite smoothly. Max, ever the eager and cooperative model, posed for the camera with effortless charisma and charm. His expressive eyes sparkled with excitement, and his ever-present grin, equal parts happiness and mischief, could warm even the coldest of hearts. However, as life often goes, things took an unexpected turn. Just as I thought we were on the verge of capturing some photographic brilliance, Max had other plans. In a sudden and inexplicable turn of events, he made a beeline for the camera, nosing his way into the lens. The once pristine camera lens was now occupied by something a little wet, shiny, and incredibly close up. Max's tongue. The abrupt and surprisingly intimate encounter between my camera and Max's tongue left me utterly stunned. I couldn't help but burst into fits of uncontrollable laughter, completely forgetting the photo shoot I had initially envisioned. Max, on the other hand, seemed utterly unperturbed by my mirth and continued to explore the camera with unyielding curiosity. It became clear that I had no choice but to capture this hilarious moment that had unfolded before me. With tears of laughter still in my eyes, I pressed the shutter button. In that split second, I had a photograph that was far from what I had anticipated. It was a candid shot of Max's tongue, filling the entire frame, looking as majestic and absurd as one could imagine. The sight was a masterpiece in its own peculiar way, a whimsical work of art that would leave even the most distinguished artists of our time flummoxed. Max's tongue, in all its glory, displayed every detail, from the bumps to the droplets. It had officially taken center stage. I couldn't help but share the photograph with friends and family who, like me, found themselves equally amused by Max's sudden and unexpected photographic debut. This accidental masterpiece quickly gained fame among my social circle, spreading like wildfire on social media. The world had discovered a new sensation. Max, the charismatic dog with a penchant for up-close photography. The tongue portrait quickly became Max's nickname, and I couldn't help but chuckle every time I thought about it. Max, the newfound camera star, remained blissfully oblivious to his sudden fame. He continued to be the playful and loving companion I had always known, entirely unaware of the viral sensation he had become. And while I had set out to capture a different side of him, the tongue portrait 
was a reminder of the unpredictable and delightful nature of life with a dog. Once upon a time, in a bustling city, there were three friends who shared a peculiar hobby. They were avid people watchers. They would spend their weekends in the city's most popular park, perched on a bench, sipping coffee, and observing the diverse tapestry of human life that unfolded before them. Each had their own unique perspective on the people they observed. The first friend, Henry, was a keen observer of fashion. He found it fascinating how people expressed themselves through their clothing and accessories. One sunny Saturday morning, he saw a man striding through the park wearing a bright purple suit, a neon green hat, and mismatched shoes. Henry couldn't help but chuckle. He dubbed this man the unintentional fashion icon and began cataloging more such fashion misadventures. His collection of fashion faux pas grew so vast that he eventually published a humorous book about it, making him a best-selling author. The second friend, Emma, had a knack for body language and nonverbal communication. She could tell what people were feeling just by observing their gestures and expressions. One day, she saw a young couple sitting on a bench, seemingly in the midst of an argument. As their discussion grew more heated, they both crossed their arms, their faces reddening. Emma watched them intently, and as the argument reached its climax, they simultaneously burst into laughter, their bodies relaxing. She couldn't help but wonder if she'd witnessed the birth of a new inside joke between the two of them. Emma's fascination with nonverbal communication led her to a career in psychology. She became a renowned expert in deciphering body language and even worked as a consultant for law enforcement agencies, helping detectives interpret witness statements more accurately. The third friend, David, was a lover of stories. He saw every person as a book waiting to be read. One sunny afternoon, he spotted an elderly man feeding pigeons in the park. David approached and struck up a conversation. The man named Samuel began recounting his life story. He had been a pilot during World War II and had flown missions all over Europe. He shared tales of daring dogfights, captured behind enemy lines, and daring escapes. David was entranced, and over the next few months he visited Samuel regularly, recording his extraordinary life story. David eventually turned these stories into a documentary that not only preserved Samuel's legacy but also became a critically acclaimed film. It touched the hearts of millions, reminding them of the bravery and sacrifices of those who had lived through a tumultuous era. As time passed, Henry, Emma, and David became famous for their unique perspectives on people. Henry's fashion faux pas, Emma's nonverbal insights, and David's storytelling abilities made them celebrities in their own right. They were invited to talk shows, participated in documentaries, and were often recognized while sipping coffee on their park bench. One day, a renowned psychologist named Professor Watson came across a magazine article featuring their stories. Intrigued, he decided to meet them. He believed that combining their unique skills could lead to groundbreaking discoveries about human behavior. The trio agreed to work together, embarking on a grand adventure of exploration they observed people not only in the park, but in various settings across the city. Their project aimed to understand the intricate connections between fashion choices, nonverbal communication, and the personal narratives people wove into their lives. As they delved deeper into their research, they made astounding connections. They found that people often dressed in a way that reflected their mood or self-image, and these choices influenced how others perceived them. They also discovered that body language was not just a reflection of emotions, but could also shape them. By modifying their posture and gestures, people could influence their own feelings and those of others. The group's most profound discovery, however, came from the interplay between personal stories and fashion. They realized that people often chose clothing and accessories that represented significant moments in their lives, or the lives they aspired to lead. These choices served as powerful reminders and motivators, creating a deep emotional connection to their appearance. Their groundbreaking research was published in a prestigious scientific journal, earning them international acclaim. They continued to work together, developing workshops and therapies that helped people express themselves, 
understand others, and harness the power of their personal stories to transform their lives.